Hi, welcome to A Watchman's Journal. I'm Diana Larkin. I am so glad you have joined me today. Welcome to YouTube, to Rumble, to His Glory TV, and to Real Talk Radio. I am just so pleased that you have joined us today because the Father has some powerful words to share with us that will strengthen us and encourage us, give us hope, and just help us to take care of business in our own souls. I just finished doing an interview for His Glory with Patty Tycro, who many of you also follow. She uh, has powerful words from the Lord, and you'll want to be sure to tune into that Friday night at 8 p.m. at hisglory.me. All right, we are going to, at the end, again, show signs and wonders, pictures, all the amazing photos that you send to me. They are just mind-blowing and just a stamp of his love and his power to us, getting us through this season, probably the most difficult battle any of us have faced in our lifetimes. The title of today's episode is Foolish February. Well, that's going to be interesting. Um, I did want to start out with a prophecy confirmed. Uh, last week's uh, episode was called The Three Thunders, and uh, Karen shared this confirmation. She said, I couldn't believe the word about the three thunders. A couple months ago, I had the most vivid dream I've ever had. I woke up to the loudest thunders I've ever heard in my life. The house, the whole house shook from the sound. I got up and looked out, but it was clear skies. I even checked my weather app and looked at whether there were storms on the radar. Nothing. It blew my mind. But the most amazing thing was that I had no fear. I've pondered what that dream was about. So now I know. I just love the Lord so much. Isn't that true? Dessel B. shared this. She said, Hank Kuhneman also had a word Friday night at the Prophetic Summit at Oasis Church, which is Tim Sheets Church. And he said, under the unction of the, of the Holy Spirit, is this an explosion? Is this the sound of a missile? Is this the sound of war beats? Or is it the sound of thunder? Is this sound? Is this the sound of my hand that is open now in an unusual way to bring justice to establish righteousness? Wow. January 23rd, 2023, from word I had heard, called rumblings from heaven. This isn't the first time that he's spoken to me about thunders. He said, I've released rumblings from heaven against my enemies. They will build into the loudest thunder and the hugest storm my enemies have ever seen. And then in a word dated December 20th of 2022, I quoted this verse from Psalm 77, verses 18 and 19 from the Passion Translation. Rolling whirlwinds exploded with sonic booms of thunder, rumbling as the sky shouted out your story with light and sound and wind. Everything on earth shook and trembled as you drew near. Um, Pat McManus released this word Friday night at Oasis Church as well. Uh, and this, uh, Des will be uh, shared this with me as well too, as a confirmation. Now he said the Air Force, which are the angels, is moving with power moving with authority, moving with the fullness of God, and marching forward with a sound that's resonating, that's breaking barriers, breaking shackles, breaking chains off of every system and structure according to the power of the word of the Lord. Father, release the sonic boom of your glory across this land. Wow, those are amazing confirmations. I love that when the Father does that. We're going to start with January 30th of 2024, and it's Who Left the Door Open? Kind of reminds me of Who Left the Dogs Out? The Father said, the secret plans, the true character, and the disgusting deeds of the ones partnered with darkness are being laid bare before the world. They cannot understand how these exposures are happening. It's like someone left the door open on their secret meetings, and their plans have leaked out to the public. This is the year of the door. For my own, it is a year of opportunity and stepping into the fullness of the call on your life and into a world where I abundantly supply all your needs. 
But as for the darkness, it is a year of exposure because it is who it is I who have opened the door into their secret meetings and into their perverse lifestyles. This kind of widespread exposure has never happened to them before. Your prayers, decrees, and declarations that I expose, expose, expose the darkness are being answered as they fling one door after another open on their dark and evil plans and deeds. The year of the open door is a blessing for my children of light, but it is an open door of judgment and justice to those partnered with evil. Watch as I open one door after another into their highly secret world, and I lay it bare for all to see. They will all be exposed, and they will reap what they have sown. Who left the door open to their secrets? I am the one who opens, and no one can shut. Wow, that is powerful. All right, January 3rd. 31st of 2024, last day of January, and we have moved into February. Foolish February that we're going to hear about. So I had another experience that morning um, being taken to the council chambers of heaven. And Brian Palencia of Love has a, a name, YouTube channel. He had found some inter interesting verses in Jeremiah on this uh, council. Uh, the Council of the Holy Ones, uh, what we know as the 24 elders. And Jeremiah 23, 18, Jeremiah says, but which of them, and he's talking about some false voices, which of them has stood in the council of the Lord to see and hear his word? Who has given heed to his word and obeyed it? And then that same chapter of 23 of Jeremiah, verse 22 but if they had stood in my counsel, the father says, they would have proclaimed my words to my people and turned them back from their evil ways and deeds. And so this word counsel is the same Hebrew word that I talked about last week, sowed. And it, it means a council, a circle of familiar friends and assembly, which is exactly how I've seen them. So anyway, this was a very powerful experience. I can't uh, overstate that to you. It was like one of those life-changing things that happened to me, and it's called my blue fire. As I was breathing in the Father's presence this morning, the sweet incense fragrance of the prayers of the saints filled my sunroom and lifted me into the council chamber of heaven. I saw an angel waving a censer, that was wafting the incense all over the sunroom. But at the same time, I could see he was doing it in the council chamber in heaven. As I go and stand behind my elder, he reaches back and pats my hand. I tell the father, no wonder you love our prayers. They are such a beautiful fragrance. He smiles and his love reaches out and embraces me. He looks directly at me with his blazing fire blue eyes, and I feel the blue fire filling me completely. I surrender to this blue fire, and I say, consume all that is not of you. The blue fire began to leave my body, but it remained on my heart, probably dealing with issues of my heart, but also physically rewiring it as I saw Electrical impulses are flashing around my heart. So the room stilled and the father spoke. My blue fire is a special flame that I am releasing on those who will ask for it. You need to ask for it. This blue fire comes from my eyes and it carries my passion, my holiness, and my revelation. If you surrender to my blue fire, it will consume what is not of me in your life and heart. And you will find that your thoughts and your motives align with my thoughts and motives. And I can tell you, this has been playing out in my life. He has been bringing up things where I am not in alignment with him. And I have some things that need to be dealt with. So that blue fire is working in my life. He goes on, my blue fire prepares you for deeper revelation of who I am and of what I am doing. My blue fire aligns your thoughts with my thoughts and helps you understand my ways and my timing in the exposures, judgments, and justice. 
the blue fire from my eyes will pinpoint places in your body that need healing, restoring, and recalibrating. Come before me and ask for my blue fire to consume you. You will be changed and renewed. Wow, that was just so powerful. So uh, I have just want to share some testimonies that came from that particular uh, word that I released. Uh, an anonymous blog commenter said, I prayed the word God gave you, Diana, asking for his blue fire, and it came down. It was waves of his power hitting me. It felt like electricity from my head to my toes. My lick, lick, my neck literally bounced with each wave of it. Kind of hard to explain. I have been greatly empowered today. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, God Most High. Uh, and that's the proper response. We just receive it. Now, some people may not feel all those outward manifestations. You may not feel anything, but you receive it by faith. And you'll begin to see the fruit of it played out in your life. So Crystal said, wow, the blue fire word. Wow, wow, wow. I literally just saw blue fire at a 10-day tent revival meeting I had been attending. There was a loud pop, like a gun was fired in the tent. The power system went down and everything went pitch black. And right in front of me, I saw a blue flash of light. So exciting. Wow, is that cool? Uh, Sheila left this comment about the blue fire. I also love to hear what God has for us through you. I share with others. Some believe and some don't. I feel they have God in a box. Today was a day that a couple were questioning the blue fire, saying, it's not in the Bible. Well, I did find in Hebrews 12, 29, for our God is a consuming fire. She says, I also looked up blue fire and I found this. The intense blue hue of a flame often signifies intense heat and raw power. Wow, that would be a consuming fire. The intense heat of a blue flame can be seen as a symbol of transformation and purification. I also have asked him to consume me with his blue fire. So my research that I did... Uh, I found a, you know, a science website says within commonly seen fires, the hottest flames turn blue. So it's the very hottest. As heat descends in temperature, flames appear white, yellow, orange, bright red, and then dark red. Isn't that interesting? Uh, and then there was a personal testimony that was sent to me on X, Gwen H. I have a couple of Gwens that follow me on H, so this is on X. So this is Gwen H. She said, years ago, I worked at a ceramics place and I was given the statue of Jesus to paint. So it had to be done in stages. So the next morning when she went to complete the statue, she noticed the eyes had been painted blue. Now she said, she asked all around and no one had touched the statue. She said, I would have painted the eyes brown. Because commonly, uh, people from the Middle East have brown eyes. Um, blue are kind of rare. Uh, but she she began to really value that statue. And she actually uh, kept it for herself and treasured it over the years. And this blue fire word that I released that day confirmed her that Jesus had wanted her to see his eyes portrayed as blue. So that is so incredible. Now, I'm not saying that Jesus' eyes are always blue. I don't know. They could be brown and they just turn blue when the Holy Spirit lights that blue fire in them. So uh, that was a powerful word. So, all right, we're at February 1st of 2024 to our word, foolish February. This month, you will see those who highly regard themselves as being so far above you make one foolish decision after another. You will see unjust court cases and phony narratives against innocent people begin to collapse like a hot air balloon that has been punctured. Those being paid to persecute the righteous will stand in front of news cameras and only foolish dribble will come out of their mouths. The political party of death and destruction will make foolish cho choices of who to promote for the next election. 
I am going to uncover who these people really are. And these foolish choices will be disastrous. I will cause puffed up advisors to recommend foolish policy decisions that will backfire on this illegitimate administration. Foolish February will bring about some important turning points in this war of dark to light. Be on guard because these losses will cause the arrogant elite to speed up the release of their death agendas. Even as you rejoice at foolishness on display, be releasing preemptive strikes against the death agendas. Pray for their uncovering, release my host to defuse these schemes, and send those schemes back into the camp of the darkness. Pray for foolish February to have its full effect on the darkness. Look ahead, because there is a major march coming. Wow, that's a teaser. <laughs> All right, February 2nd, 2024. It's from chaos to order, from dark to light. Uh, and I realized as I sat down and wrote the date to begin to hear for God's voice, it was 2-2-2024. Two, two, well, there's a lot of twos there. It's 22-22. The biblical meaning of 22 is moving from disorder and disintegration to order. It is light, illumination. The Father said, let today's date be a double witness to you of the truth of my promises that your world is going from chaos to order and from dark to light. Bringing down the dark systems that have enslaved you will cause a short time of chaos in your world. Do not fear this short time of disorder, because I have raised up a master builder to lead your nation into a new era of rebuilding, far beyond your expectations. As the darkness crashes, I will shine the light of my illumination on those willing to partner with me. And they will rebuild with brilliant new ideas, new inventions, and new ways to make life fuller and freer for all. As many are drawn into the kingdom during this tumultuous season, I will illuminate their hearts with my ways and a desire to serve others rather than be served. I will also visit my church with my illumination so that those who relied on head knowledge will experience my reality and my nearness. Those who truly know me will help the world through this transition time from chaos to order and from dark to light. Beautiful. All right, we're going to read a journal nugget from two years ago. Uh, someone on Facebook recommended that, you know, why don't you look back and see, because that was 2 2 two twenty two. So there was a lot of twos in that. And this was called The Witness. The Father said, I call heaven and earth today to witness that what I have promised I will indeed do. You may think that the signs, wonders, and shakings that are happening are extreme, but they are only acting as a witness of what I will do in the supernatural realm. And that, you know, people in Oklahoma just experienced an earthquake and they're like wondering, what is this? God is shaking people awake. He's shaking open the darkness and he is getting people's attention. The Father said, I am shaking age-old powers of darkness out of their seats of control, and all those who serve them in the natural realm will also be shaken out of their seats of power and control. He says, the cold weather and in, in unusual places is a picture of freezing and immobilizing bioweapons that were planned to be used against you. The extreme warm days are a picture of me making things too hot for the corrupt to handle. They will be driven out of their overheated hiding places, and they will be exposed in my hot light. Tides changing, rivers running backwards, floods, winds are all a picture of my mighty hand over my creation and my power to change the tide of events in your land and to flood out and blow out the corruption until the land is clean. See unusual events as a witness to what I am doing to fulfill my words and promises to your nation. Haggai 2, 22, mm, lots of twos there. I am about to shake up everything, to turn everything upside down and start from top to bottom, overthrow governments, destroy foreign powers, dismantle the world of weapons and armaments, throw armies into confusion so that they will end up killing 
one another. Wow. Daniel 2, 22, it is he, speaking of God, who reveals the profound and hidden things. He knows what is in the darkness and the light dwells with him. Wow, powerful. February 3rd, 2024, dust off your sense of adventure and wonder. So many discoveries and so much knowledge have been held back from you. Some of these discoveries were held back by the enemy and those who serve him because these discoveries would have made your life easier and longer. The darkness hid knowledge from you so that you they could keep you shut up in a prison of partial knowledge and some outright lies. If you don't know the truth, how can you be free? When I speak of expose, 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 I am saying all darkness, perversion, and corruption are going to be uncovered. But I am also telling you that discoveries and knowledge withheld from you will be brought to light as well. The exposures of both darkness and light will result in the dawning of a new era that is purer, freer, and fuller. Are your hearts ready to receive all these new revelations? This is one of the reasons I have urged you to draw close to my heart and to know my voice so that I can comfort you as darkness is exposed and so that you will not react with fear and draw back from new discoveries because you've been learned you have learned to be led by my voice and my spirit into the new don't miss out on the new adventures and wonders that i have for you by getting stuck in the past i have much more for you to learn and to experience dust off your sense of adventure and wonder and open your heart to be led by my spirit into new discoveries and greater knowledge the best is yet to come wow we're going to hear that confirmed in another uh, word I'm going to read later. Uh, just uh, to give you an example, my dear, um, absolutely wonderful mom, who's been in heaven a few years now, uh, she decided that computers were the mark of the beast and that, and she refused to ever have anything to do with them because she was just sure it was all but really bad. And all the new technologies are that way. They come with risks and they come with benefits. If we're moving into a new era, those benefits are going to be magnified and we're going to knock off the things that have been negative about technologies. So that's how I want you to perceive things. Because if my mom would have just said yes, she would have had a blast. She was a stock market follower. Oh my gosh, she could have been real time watching those ticker tapes go. So keep your, keep your sense of adventure dusted off and be open because God's going to lead you. Holy Spirit is brilliant at leading you into all truth because he is truth. February 4th of 2024, God's perfect government. Again, that was a significant date, 2424. And so there's 2424 in that date, uh, which is really significant since, since I've been having experiences with the 24 elders. And 24 is the number of God's perfect government. Um, and if you add up the single digits of the date, two plus four, two plus four equals 12, which is God's governmental anointing. It is the 12 apostles. It is the 12 tribes of Israel. And of course, those two together equal 24. So he said, my perfect government is being released upon the earth as part of my rescue operation. Man partner with darkness has so perverted the mountain of government that it must be torn down and rebuilt with heaven's mountain of government, perfect government. My perfect government comes to those who are surrendered to me and my ways. As my perfect government moves in to replace man's perverted government, you will see Job 24, 24 out of the New Living Translation. And though they are great now, in a moment, they will be gone like all others, cut off like heads of grain. Those who seem so powerful and untouchable will be suddenly cut off as my threshing machine of judgment and justice mows them down. The fear of the Lord will return to your land and people's hearts will once again recognize righteousness. Proverbs 24, 24 in the Passion Translation. If you say to the guilty, you are innocent. The nation will curse you and people will revile you. 
You need to listen to that false judge's lying leaders. That is what is going to be sowing, reaping what you have sown. The father says, what will increase the power of my perfect government on the earth will be when the Jewish people discover that Jesus is their Messiah and they become one new man with my church established on my 12 apostles. The 12 tribes and the 12 apostles will become 24 and will more fully represent my perfect government on the earth, just as the 24 elders in my heavenly council represent my perfect government in heaven. Allow my perfect government to be established in your own heart. Joshua 24, 24 in the Passion Translation. The people said to Joshua, we will serve the Lord our God, and we will listen to and obey his voice. Wow. This uh, next entry is from a year ago. It's a journal nugget, February 4th, 2023. It's learning to battle from a place of rest. Now, Hank Kuhneman has declared that this is a year of rest, even though there are going to be intense battles that are being waged. So I just wanted to pull up this word again, because I really think it goes into how that is possible. So the father said, are you asking how you wage war with a fierce enemy from a place of rest? Aren't battle and rest opposite words that don't go together, you ask? In my kingdom, these are not opposing words. Rest in my kingdom is not ceasing all activity and just sitting in one place. Rest describes a position I'm calling you to live from. My rest calls you to lay down your human efforts and reasonings and to allow my spirit to flow through you with his power and his supernatural insights. Warfare waged from resting in my power and wisdom is very effective. You will not become so weary and beaten down when you are using my power instead of your own human strength to fight an enemy empowered by darkness. So the darkness has learned the lesson of relying on dark powers to wage their destructive agendas. Your warfare against spiritual powers will be weak if you are trying to battle spiritual forces with only the power of man, and you will find yourself exhausted and fighting hopelessness. My human, my kind of rest is not ceasing from all activity. It is choosing to lay aside human efforts and entering into the rest of faith in my ability to cause you to triumph. And that's talked about in Hebrews chapter 12, I believe, if you want to go there and search that out. Could be Hebrews 4 too. I should have looked that up, sorry. Then your warfare will be strategic and powerful because you are drawing from my strength and not your own. I am calling you to learn to battle from a place of faith rest in me. When you learn to rest from your own works and enter into my works, you will experience greater fruitfulness and growing intimacy with me. And that blesses my heart. February 5th, 2024, freedom, freedom. As I shake and thunder and roar over your nation, you will see dark systems exposed and brought crashing down. This should not be unsettling for you because you know I have told you the evil must be removed so that I can bring in freedom. Okay, did you hear that? We are not to be unsettled by all the tumultuous stuff going on because we have been told what is happening and we can rest and work from his strength. He says, freedom to prosper, freedom to be healthy and freedom to walk in my ways. I am also promising freedom to those whose identities have been stolen and who have turned to perverted lifestyles to fill the void. It is time my army of light to take a stand against this massive theft of stolen identities. Man, that is so true. That is what has happened to a whole generation of young people coming up under us. They have been robbed of their identities and foolishness put, comes in that place when you don't have truth. So this is a really important word. The father says, take those you know whose identities have been stolen and take them to my courtroom in heaven. 
I, the Father, will be the presiding judge. Declare that the blood of Jesus covers each one that you have brought before me. Then demand that the enemy be required to return their stolen identities now. Wait, and then you will hear me say, petition granted. The enemy must return what he has stolen. Remember that this is the season I have declared you will recover all, and that includes stolen identities. Now, get a bit bolder and bring whole groups of those with stolen identities before me. Cover them with my son's blood and demand their identities be returned. Stolen identities can be found among those brainwashed by lies and misinformation. It can be found among those who were attacked with ill health and infirmity became their identity. It can be found among those captured by addictions that try to fill the loss of identity. It can also be present among terrorists, gang members, and those programmed to harm others. If you demand their true identities be returned, you will weaken the enemy's forces and he will see his plans fail, fail, fail. Partner with me in calling forth freedom for your nation and freedom for your lives. Freedom, freedom. Wow, powerful. I did do that with some very near and dear to me that have um, just been deceived. And they are, they've in one way or another, have had their identity stolen. And I it was a very powerful experience to take them to the courtroom of heaven um, to, uh, I just was in the enemy's face. You give them back their identities. I have covered them with the blood of Jesus. And the father deliberating not very long till he said, petition granted. You must return their stolen identities. I am waiting to see that play out. I had a comment on my blog that I thought was very brilliant. Uh, she said, truly, we have all had our original God-created identities stolen at one time or another. And now I come with them into your courtroom, and I declare that the blood of Jesus covers each one of us, and I demand the enemy is required to return what he has stolen. I thank you, Father, that you grant our petitions. So, wow, this amazing person has brought us before the throne of heaven and the courtroom of heaven. And we are going to get back everything that was stolen from us as well. Here is, um, I don't even know how I saw this. I have never heard of this person before. It's Dr. Michael Maiden, M-A-I-D-E-N. He is pastor of Church for the Nations. And they do have a YouTube channel, Church for the Nations. Someone had posted this uh, prophetic word that he had released. I think it might have been a message or something. But anyway, this is what his prophetic word was. Uh, he had a vision of a gigantic room with a very high ceiling where every wall was filled with thousands and thousands of clocks. The clocks were all different from each other. Some were large, some were small, and each one had a unique design. The Lord walked into the room and declared, it's time to restore the years for my people. When he said that, all second, minute, and hour hands on the clocks suddenly started going backwards incredibly fast. Every clock in the room responded obediently to the voice of Jesus as time was being reversed. You're entering a season of supernatural restoration where God is working to retrieve, rebuild, renew, and restore everything that has been stolen, withheld, or destroyed from your life and family. It's not too late for you. Your story isn't over. God is fighting for you, and he is restoring the years. The best is yet to come. So that delighted my heart to see that was that's such a confirmation of what I heard about stolen identities. And the father has said a number of times to me, the best is yet to come. So I I did um watch a video of this pastor 
Uh, and I would recommend his uh, video on a prophetic word for 2024 on the YouTube Church for the Nations channel. Uh, it's a word about recovering all. So powerful. And then we have a journal nugget. And then we're going to go into our action items, which will be on my blog. My blog, everywhere else you can find me, is in the description. Right after the title of the video, it will say more or have a little down arrow. Click open, click open a couple of times to get everything to open up. You'll find uh, my blog where you can read all these words. And you will also find the action items there so that you can print them out, pray them back to the Father. And also my uh, Proton email where you can send uh, photos that you find of God's wonders. All right, this February 5th, 2023 is fresh, full, and free. Because you are made in our image, your experience of life on this earth should be fresh, full, and free. You can see how darkness has tried to mar your life with sin traps, sickness, and stealing provision and creativity. He is currently doing the same destructive, deceptive program to nations as he seeks to dominate and control through greedy, arrogant people. These pride-filled ones don't realize that they are also being dominated and controlled by the darkness. The darkness does not care about them. It only wants to fulfill its angry war against my goodness. The enemy has tried to convince you that this is just how life is and to not expect much, but I am telling you, raise your faith expectations because I am coming in response to your heart cries for deliverance. I will completely expose the dark agendas and shatter the delusions the darkness has established in the areas of culture where I meant for those of the light to be ruling and reigning. As the evil empire crashes and burns, Look with expectant eyes as I establish my kingdom rule through my people. My kingdom ways are full of life and fulfillment. Rise up in faith and embrace a new day where life is fresh, full, and free. We say yes and amen to you, Father. All right, our action items were to ask for his blue fire. It will consume what is not of him. It prepares us for deeper revelations of who he is and what he is doing. It also aligns us with him, helps us understand his timing, so we don't end up getting frustrated and angry. It pinpoints places in our bodies that need healing, restoring, and recalibrating. Ask for his blue fire, and you will be changed and renewed. The Father says he is orchestrating February to make the darkness look foolish. That is good news. However, we do need to be on guard because all these losses will cause them to speed up the release of their death agendas. I say go for it. We have the, the weapons, the warfare, our spiritual weapons to combat and to uh, meet those and to preemptively strike them down. Pray that these schemes be uncovered. Release the host to defuse these plans and send them back into the camp of the darkness. Pray that foolish February will have its full effect on the darkness. The Father has urged us to draw closer to his heart and to know his voice so that he can comfort us as darkness is exposed and so we will not react with fear and draw back from new discoveries. We need to trust Holy Spirit will lead us into new adventures and wonders. Don't get stuck in the past. Dust off that sense of adventure and wonder and open your heart to be led by the Spirit of Truth into new discoveries and greater knowledge. God's perfect government comes to those who are surrendered to him and his ways. Declare with Joshua, we will serve the Lord our God and we will listen to and obey his voice. God's rest calls us to lay down our human efforts and reasonings and to allow his spirit to flow through us with his power and his supernatural insights. Warfare from rest is strategic, powerful, and full of faith. It is time for us to take a stand against the massive theft of stolen identities. We are to take people to the courtroom of heaven, cover them with the blood of Jesus, and demand that the enemy be required to return their stolen identities now. We will hear his petition granted. We can get bold and bring whole groups into this courtroom and demand their identities be returned. The brainwashed, those in ill health, Addicted ones, terrorists, gangs, 
those programmed to harm others. We're to call forth individual freedom and freedom for our nation. As the evil empire crashes and burns, we're to look with expectant eyes as he establishes his kingdom rule through us, his people. Rise up in faith and embrace a new day where life is fresh, full, and free. Wow. Good stuff. Oh. All right. Let's start this out. <clears throat> Our amazing signs and wonders. All right, let me see. Let me pull up the rest of the pictures here. I have no idea what order these are in. They kind of, for some reason, got jumbled, sadly. So um, be a little patient with me because I'm going to have to search things out. Um, this is a series of pictures uh, from Elizabeth. And uh, she sent them all to me and said, asked if I think they had any meaning. And Oh, yeah, they they are a beautiful parable to her that God was speaking to her in nature. She takes astounding pictures. I, I can feel the heart of God in them. They like make me want to cry. I just feel his nearness so much. So this first one she took was she was going through a storm in her life, and the sky really represented that. But you'll see outlined here in the light is a host that God let her know was there and with her. Okay, now I need the next picture in the story. I think this is it. Oh, wait, that's the same one. <laughs> Here we go. So you may wonder why this turtle was speaking to her, part of her story. Well, when she was a child, she had an imaginary friend who was some kind of an amazing turtle. And he, he did stop appearing to her. But let me tell you that often children's imaginary friends are their guardian angels. They are just appearing to the children in a form that the children can accept uh, and understand. And so this was just a picture to Elizabeth that God was near and hearing her and that her guardian angels were here. This picture also uh, is a description of where her life was. Do you see this rock? There's a tree growing out of it. She refused to give up. She refused to not uh, continue to grow uh, despite the hard circumstances. And over it began to arch a rainbow of his promises to her. And if that rainbow wasn't enough, he showed her this enormous rainbow over the park where she goes. I mean, that is just stunning. His promises are real and true. And then here's this beautiful photo. It's the butterfly, which we know undergoes metamorphosis. It goes through a time of great change. And it can't be comfortable being inside all cramped up in that chrysalis. And But when the caterpillar comes out, it's totally changed. And it has wings and it can fly. All this is going to be accomplished because she sits by the quiet waters. She surrenders herself as this little stream and waterfall is doing. And then she rests by the quiet waters of Psalm 23. And I just wanted to show a couple extra pictures that she had sent. Uh, this is the park where she takes pictures and this glory sunset. Just the rays are, are coming out. And this picture, she caught a beautiful dragonfly on this flower. It is a stunning picture. But what meant a lot to me was this how I this is how I saw um, Raphael, the angel of healing that appeared to me. This is how his wings appeared, filamenty like that. So that was pretty cool. All right, now I need to go back because. Um, I think we'll just take it this way. MH sent this. It is a beautiful cross in the sky. And thank you to Elizabeth for sharing those photos and for giving me permission to share a little bit of your story. I know that it has touched many hearts. You know, I see the number one, two, three a lot. Well, 
this was on the news and captured my eyes. Uh, Florida reported 123 arrested in a human trafficking operation. That included an elementary school teacher and other, like a Wesley Chapel basketball coach. And um, it's just very sad that people get captured by that darkness. And that's a stolen identity that we need to pray that these people have been sucked into pornography and into these perverted lifestyles would be set free to know who they really are and embrace that. Uh, Diana took this fiery sunset picture for us. And look, it is a huge, huge host with double wings. And he is landing. That's always good news. Diana sent this one as well. Not me. <laughs> um, and it is a pink host wing. And the moon just appeared right in the middle of the wing. Very cool. Penny sent this. It is a light pillar that appeared at a sunset um, in Arkansas. Um, it, it is just stunning what God is putting on display for us to see. Penny sent this one as well. It is a light pillar that appeared in a sunset over Missouri. So very cool. God is uh, showing up in many areas. Uh, Bonnie sent this. It is a triple rainbow. Uh, it's a lighted dove showing up over Vermont. So here, this part of the rainbow makes it look like a dove. And there's the light pillar here as well. One rainbow, two rainbows, and then the bottom of a rainbow. This is just a stunning picture. And Hank Kuhnman prophesied we would be seeing double rainbows. Amazing. Gloria sent this very cool picture. Two host wings touching down right over her house. That's something you want to see. Uh, Taylor, uh, Linda, his mom, sent this picture that Taylor, her son, had taken. And it is a diamond sun dog. I mean, is that stunning or what? So you can hear the sun. See, there's the sun dog going up. But brilliant shaft of light and just these sun dog lasers turning into diamonds. That's just so cool. So there's a story that goes with this. Uh, my son Taylor took this picture at approximately 8 a.m. on Thursday, January 11th, 2024, in the northwest corner of North Dakota. He said when he first saw it that it was so bright he could barely look at it. He did post it on Facebook, and this is what he wrote about it. Took this picture today, no filters, nothing. So most people will call or see this as a sundog, but I see more than that. I see Jesus Christ in the center, holding his arms out to all. In the semicircle, I see his shield of armor shooting light outside the semicircle into the darkness of satanic demons. On the sun line, I see a blanket, a blanket of God's love, forgiveness, power of healing, a blanket of comfort. I truly believe we're living in biblical, biblical times. People need to turn to the Bible and believe and trust in God more than ever. Call it a sundog and cold temperatures. I don't care. God is here. God bless. Thank you, Taylor. Gosh, that's just gives me God bumps. All right, this is Gigi sent us this unusual picture. This is in Kansas. Do you know, just every state is being visited. Rods of God or light lasers of glory, however you want to uh, see them. That is just incredible. And it's in front of this like government facility, which I thought was really impressive. You think you're something? Look what God can do. Uh, Sandy sent us this. It is a sun dog over... Chicago. And it's got that double laser going out from the sides and then one across the sun, which reminds me of a crossbow which, which with which he releases arrows. Um, Irene uh, sent this one. And you'll see right here, there's a goat man. Man, that's really clear. We don't like him, but guess what? He's looking pretty... Uh, unstable there and scared. 
And if you'll see right here, there are a couple war horses riding on. I think he's uh, pretty uh, uh, upset about this. And you notice his head is down in a, a, a gesture of submission. Margo sent this as, was caught over Virginia. It's just some beautiful rainbow clouds. Wow, wow, wow. I got to find my place here. Where am I? There we go. Okay. Just don't want to miss anything. Paula uh, saw a face in here, and you'll see the eye and the eye. It's almost like another goat man there. Um, but look at these fire clouds, and they are absolutely blocking his way. Yay! Yay for fire clouds. Julia from the UK sent this. It is uh, beautiful arrows, or you could say um, wings, whatever. And then there's all, I mean, there's a lot of arrows in this picture. And then these look like feathers uh, here, the feather wings. So pretty cool. Paul and Holly sent this. Uh, they spotted this bad guy up here. But again, he is stopped by God's rainbow from coming down. Um, really cool. And you'll notice it was over the Goodwill store. Yeah, God's goodwill to us. This is an unusual picture that Juniper sent, uh, kind of unique. If you'll notice this weather pattern that's shown here, here's a lioness. Look, she is devouring something. Wow, pretty cool. Gabby sent this. And now we have um, rods of God or those glory lasers appearing over Iowa. Yes. John sent this uh, really cool picture. It is, um, he sees this as a host and they're right in the sun. Do you see their wings coming out, their body trailing back here? And there is the sun um, just showing them off. All right, I think we have another one from John coming up here. Uh, these are some just some beautiful uh, double wings of a host. Just so pretty. Let's see, these two are up, these two are down. So that's pretty cool. Love it. Uh, Steve sent us this beautiful rainbow that appeared around the moon, this circle rainbow. Wow, just incredible. Uh, Patricia sent this. Uh, it is um, a beautiful aurora borealis in the shape of an angel. So that gorgeous. Let's see. I don't see where that picture is. Okay. It didn't mention, I guess, where it was. So I like to note that if I can. Uh, Tammy, who lives above the Allegheny River, uh, has um, taken many, many beautiful pictures. Look at this glory sun. And um, she said she got up out of bed, woke up, put your face in the sunlight. God's bright glory has risen for you. This is the message Bible, Isaiah 60, verse one. So it says, get out of bed, rise up for you and put your face in the sunlight. Little heart, there's something blocking the words there, sorry. God's bright glory has risen for you. The whole earth is wrapped in darkness. All people sunk in darkness, but God rises on you. His sunrise glory breaks over you. Thanks, Tammy. That's a good word. Bonnie sent us these beautiful rainbows, and they appeared in Oregon, in Can at Cannon Beach in Oregon. So beautiful, beautiful. You can see um, it's just like a dome. Uh, that's so amazing. Bonnie also sent us this green cloud. Wow. This is a, quite a vicious storm. You can see storm clouds there, but we see light here. So again, it's dark to light, showcasing that for us. All right, we're going to move on to Mary's photo. Oh, if only I could find her. It was, was taken in uh, Louisiana, Taboda, I think is uh, Louisiana. And it looks like a road or it looks like a zipper, you know, whichever. Um, I'm good with either one. God can use zippers and he can use roads. <laughs> 
All right. Kathy sent us this. Um, it is a host. Just, can you see a number of hosts rising up, rising up, rising up? And uh, it's really hard to see because the picture isn't real clear, but there's a cross here. There is a cross here. And there is a cross here that appeared in this photo after she took it and was looking at it. So incredible. Uh, Penny took this most, she said she's never seen a sky like this. And she felt like she was underwater and that these were waves of water over her. Uh, Penny took this as well. Look at this curling cloud formation here in front of the glory sun. It's our DNA getting lit up and getting changed and restored. I really like that. Here we have a picture sent in by Jackie. And uh, we see in here two, here's a road. And it's pretty cool that these roads are appearing. And then we see a feather arrow. Uh, one of these roads is actually a feather arrow. So we know that roads are accomplishing things in our skies. Uh, Kay sent this beautiful fire sunset, and it appears to be a host's wing. Wow, pretty cool. And Renee sent this. It is an amazing, just in the in the twilight sky, dark clouds, just a little bit of of glory showing here. But look at this beautiful host appearing in the glory. Ah, stunning. Renee sent this one as well. It is portals of glory over Lake Michigan. I mean, I can't even number them all. There, there are so many. And of course, there were more than she could fit in her picture too. What a, a beautiful promise. Over our waters, which need covering and his glory to come over them. So beautiful message to us. Uh, here's some more light pillars that RLC sent. <clears throat> They're either light pillars or rods of God. I, I'm good with either one of those. That's pretty cool. Denise sent this amazing arrow that, um, that is coming down. Now, there's something else in this picture that I really, you know, when you enlarge it, you just lose some of the quality. But um, I think that it's coming down on, I think this was like a skull here that the arrow is piercing through and you can see angel wings coming off of that arrow because I think the hosts can come down as arrows. Dory took this unusual cloud. Look, it's a stealth bomber, you guys. I love that. Hosts coming as a stealth bomber. Sally sent these rainbow clouds and these birds got captured in the photograph as well. Ah, stunning. Sally also sent these rainbow clouds. They have been appearing all over the earth. And those in particular look like hosts to me that are moving across the sky. Okay, we got a real unusual picture. This is Margo sent this in. It's actually the picture of a nebula and it's shaped like an ant. Well, what do you know? The wonders of God's creation. Uh, Alicia sent this uh, amazing feather, huge, huge feather coming down uh, out of the glory. It's just lovely, lovely, lovely. Let me see on to this one by Alicia as well. And these are some huge arrows. Look at this arrow here. Here's a perfectly defined arrow and shaft. And these are arrows with feathers coming off. I love that he has unleashed his arrows. Uh, Larry sent this amazing picture that I wish hadn't gotten so distorted, but we had to make it bigger. But right here is an eagle. Right here is an eagle. Right here is an eagle. A triple eagle picture. And right here in the dark is a horse. It's a war horse. So we have got a war horse with eagles in the sky. Man, you guys, things are happening. Thank you, Larry, that amazing picture. Uh, Tracy sent us this beautiful sunset, and it goes from the royalty of purple into beautiful shades of pink, of the pink of new life, new beginnings. Janice sent us this um, vertical rainbow 
that just appeared in the sky. And she snapped a picture of it. That is pretty cool. Uh, Laura sent us this picture. Laura Lee, it is a cross in the sky. So comforting. Uh, Laura Lee also sent this one. It is a host, and she felt like he was rejoicing, and I think so too. Yeah. And this one is from uh, Rachel and Daniel sent us this one. We can see um, that there are amazing feathers in this picture. And again, a very clear arrow, but this one forms a cross. And then there also is a cross that appears in the sky here. Uh, this is just a powerful picture. Um, I love that one. So precious. All right. Kathy sent us this amazing. Um, it's a this is actually a sunrise, and the sky is on fire, folks. Wow, that isn't cool. <laughs> All right. We have Lori's picture here. It is a huge host wing. Wow. And then there's fire coming up. Uh, Alicia sent us this. I have a couple Alicia's who uh, send pictures. And in the future, we're going to uh, put an, an initial after their name so that you can tell which Alicia sent which picture. Uh, the ones that I already have cataloged, I don't have any way of going back and tracing which Alicia sent that. But in the future, uh, we will be denoting that because they both send amazing pictures. There must be something about the name Alicia it makes you an amazing spotter of wonders in the skies. So in this picture, we have this huge feather. Oh my gosh, if that's the feather, do you know how big the wing is? Then she caught a sunbow. Um, and then there is uh, an orb right here that looks like an eye. I mean, the, what a cool picture. And then this one uh, is, oops, let's see. Okay. Yep. That was right. And then this one is Jennifer. And she saw a fiery cross appear in the sky in Iowa. And then she began to look at it and realize there's a head. There's wings and a body here. So it is the host that appeared in the form of a cross. So beautiful. Larkin sent, I love that name. Larkin sent this picture of rainbow clouds. Look at that. They're so beautiful. They've just been appearing everywhere. Uh, Joanne sent us this uh, arrow clouds, and they're actually going both directions. See, we got, we got movement here. We got movement here. The sky is full of the hosts on assignment for us. Amy sent us this collection of dragons. So, and you might say, well, is that encouraging? It is because they're exposed. See their dark outlines here. They're not, they're bad dudes. And see this one? Yeah, they represent chaos, and what God represents is wants us to represent is His authority, bringing um, shalom or peace into the chaos. Wow, that's our assignment. This is Wyoming, a beautiful sky that appeared a fiery sunrise, and there are so many faces. I couldn't even find them all. Again, we have that bad dude looking guy that we've seen before. But look, he's looking pretty worried and he is enveloped with fire. Just makes my heart glad. Ah. Uh, Brett sent us this uh, amazing picture. It, this is taken over New Mexico. This is not caused by cold. <laughs> And we'll see this rainbow, part of a sun dog, I'm sure. But look at that powerful um, weapon that's coming out of that. Yes. Um, let's see. Terry sent us this pillar of light over Illinois. So it's a rod of God appearing over Illinois. Uh, Larkin sent this picture as well. And it is a tsunami cloud 
Do you see this cloud down here? It is just, whoa, moving in, like just like a tsunami. Uh, that's pretty cool that we get to see because we've been promised a tsunami of exposures and that's going to happen. Uh, Julie sent this. It is a face that she could see right here, eyes and a face in this fire sunrise. It's being exposed. Down you come. Bradley sent this. Um, and it is hosts flying in formation. I mean, is that cool or what? You can see like their heads, there's their bodies. They're flying off in formation. Amy sent us this amazing picture. Look at this face. Whoa. That is very clear. God is making himself known. Bonnie sent us this sunrise on the shore of Lake Michigan in Wisconsin. And it is, it's just incredible. Uh, the beautiful colors, the, the glory that's being displayed and coming forth. Okay, that's a picture from Elizabeth. I think somehow hers got in here twice. So let's see, we did that one, that one, that one. This is Jean which we'll end with, and it is an amazing host, appeared over her house, hallelujah, wing, head, wing, body, just arising in the glory off of that, and God letting her know, I'm here, I'm watching over you, you're safe. Ah, so cool. All right, you guys, uh, we will end in prayer. Thank you for uh, hanging with me and just enjoying God's presence and what he is teaching us and showing us in this amazing season. We are growing by leaps and bounds. And we are becoming true sons and daughters who rule and reign. Father, thank you that you have chosen us to live in this season when you are bringing your kingdom era into reality. We ask that you continue to, to prepare us, cleanse us, Keep our hearts just in sync with your heart. We ask for your blue fire to come, to fill us, to consume what is not of you, and to bring us into a greater depth of understanding of who you are, what you want to accomplish on this earth, and that you would empower us to help you bring that forth, to call it into being with our powerful words, because you made us in your image. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for your patience in our lives. And thank you for your great, great love that you displayed by sending Jesus to die on a cross. He lived for me. He suffered what I deserved. He took my punishment. He bore my sicknesses and my shame. And he carried my grief. His blood paid a debt I could not pay. And I receive that with such great thanksgiving. Honor that sacrifice. And I receive the glorious power of the resurrection that followed the cross. And we say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We surrender our lives anew to you and want to walk in your ways. We bless you and thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Thank you once again for joining me. Until we meet again, may you be blessed with his peace and his glory. And just keep those comments coming. They just keep me encouraged and blessed. And I know that they do the other people who share in the wonderful things that you are sharing about what God is doing in your life during this season. So be blessed. Peace and glory. I'll see you again soon.